It is Saturday morning at Calvin Coolidge High School in Northwest Washington. These are students, not here for academic credit, but to learn to play a musical instrument. They are members of the DC Youth Orchestra. Here it is, hit the down. One, two, three, go. The way that the DC Youth Orchestra is set up is really rather unique in that all sections of the orchestra are taken apart with specialists on each instrument. This allows some very special kinds of attention and a kind of a crossing individual attention with group practice in the same day. So the student gets an idea about how their peers sound on the same instrument and then they hear how the orchestra sounds at the same time. It's a tremendous learning experience in that way. The man who created this unique program is Lynn McLean. He is also manager, administrator, conductor, teacher, and chief disciplinarian. He's remarkable. He's set up this whole thing. It's all his baby. He was the orchestra director here at Coolidge until I guess it was about 14 years ago. And then he started this thing. But he keeps all this together. He knows all the kids and he runs it. There are four different levels of playing. There's a beginning and a prep level. And then the three performing levels, all of which have horn sections. And you work with them during Saturdays and evenings in the winter. And then all day, Monday through Friday in the summer. The summer is a good concentrated program. They get four hours a day of performing rehearsals and sections. Make a lot of progress. I was a member of the youth orchestra for four years, from 1966 to 1970, at which point, 1970, I graduated from high school. I was given a position here on the faculty part-time. The youth orchestra program is a very, very unique program. There are other programs all around the country that more or less have the same ideals and the same goals to train the classical musician. But the youth orchestra program is unique in the sense that it breaks it down from the very, very early stages of training and takes it all the way up to the very, very advanced stages of training for young people. Hard work and practice and Saturday morning sectionals have their payoffs. Appearances at such places as the concert hall at the Kennedy Center. Later in the season, the youth orchestra will play at the White House. But the program is larger than the orchestra. For the younger, less proficient musicians, graduation to the youth orchestra is the payoff. motivation is concerned, there's very little I have to do to motivate him. I think the thing that I have been working on within the most since I've been here is not so much the technical aspect of their development as much as the mental attitude, as much as the right way to do it. And if you know the right way to do it, 
then you can motivate yourself toward technique and actual performance. But attitude is very, very important. because they love to practice and they understand immediately where their efforts are going to go. So there's no problem there. These are usually the people that really do have a line on what they're doing, people who are intensely trained. Then there's a group of people who are under that who may not have been that well trained, but are talents who respond to those people who really can produce. And then they get pulled along and eventually learn from their peers, which is an amazing thing. And then there are people who may not practice and are just beginning to learn, maybe some of the younger children, because there really are some very young kids in the orchestra. Well, let's see now, I think maybe the youngest is about 11. The kids that are amazing are the average kids that make themselves do it. They sit and they have someone put in two, three hours a day. They make themselves more than average just through their own efforts. The kids that are going to be professionals are going to do it anyway. The orchestra concedes little to its own youth. Rehearsing for an appearance at the first American Festival of Youth Orchestras in the Carterbaron Amphitheater, McLean and his players work on several difficult pieces. The idea of competition with the other orchestras is played down, but comparisons are inevitable, and the DC group is anxious to compare well. And so they practice and rehearse. And again, the rewards are more than musical. We get some students in here who really devote their time and they're geared right to that. They're getting the tools. And those kids are very, very successful. And they come back here and they can talk to you about politics or poetry or whatever. And that comes. It's just a spin-off. Are we going to hear any of those trumpet parts out of you or what? I don't mean Alan. Yeah, they know when you haven't practiced, but you go over a lot of it in section. They expect you to practice, and they expect you to be able to keep the standard of the orchestra and of, you know, that teacher's own standard. If you're not doing all right, you know, they'll come up to you and go, hey, you better start practicing. Like, my teacher comes up and says that to me all the time. You better look that part over. Okay. <laughs> and so I look it over. A lot of discipline. It takes a lot of effort in that you have to come to rehearsals, not only during the weekdays. A lot of it is on your own. You have to take the music home and work it out yourself. I've learned what it's like to become a musician. The hard work that it takes in becoming a musician, it's a lot of fun as well as hard work. Well, I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of it. I've gotten a lot of experience out of it that I don't think can be duplicated anywhere else except in a professional orchestra. And then you're under pressure to be producing constantly right here. Well, you're under pressure to produce, but it's not that kind of pressure. Did you lose your job tomorrow if you, you know, blow it? It's not that kind of thing. Large crowds in places like the Kennedy Center can unnerve even professional performers. Young, less experienced performers are even more susceptible to the jitters. But young people who perform at the Kennedy Center, with all the training and discipline that implies, reap another personal payoff, a poise and maturity beyond their years. The pressure's always there, but once you're sitting down and playing, you really don't think about where you are, you just think about playing music. You think about what you have to do and who you're playing for before and after, but not during. You can't afford to. You get a little stage fright, but other than that, it's just a, I guess an automatic click. Oh, you know, you can't be nervous. You're a little nervous, but I've done it so much that it's second nature. I get nervous, but through the years, I've somehow developed that type of thing that I think is good for a person that 
right before they play, they don't really feel nervous. Everyone rises to the occasion, which is something that's desirable. And of course, mistakes always occur, but they occur all the time. You even hear them on record, so you know, what do you want? We get really keyed up and we get really into the music and it comes out so good. We're all really, oh, that sounds so nice. <laughs> and so we just keep concentrating which is now what we're working on, concentrating for two and a half hours at the concert from the first half and then intermission to the second half, because when we have a good first half, we go, oh, that was so good. And Mr. McLean always says, don't pat yourself on the back yet. We have a second you know, half of the concert to do. And everybody goes, oh, yeah. Kind of, oh, <laughs> snaps them into reality. say easily 90% of my work is working with the staff, staff that develops these kids all the way from four, five, six years old, all the way up to the senior high school, 18 years old. I guess all together I have to think in terms of keeping a good connection with good professional musicians, which means I have to keep my own standards to that level. Definitely staying with the community so that we can develop the parents in this program, for instance, we have families with maybe three or four kids in it. We have many kids who are related to each other. We even have children of graduates of this program here. So this is 16 years, I think, something like that. I have to cover the community churches, public schools. I have to develop the grants. I have to administer them. I have to be responsible for discipline in the classes. Come on in here. Class? Mm -hmm. You need to practice your skills. Did you? Mm -hmm. Are you well, going to be able to be able to play them today for the teacher? Uh huh. Well, I just I get my fingers in the wrong place. Well, Miss Caps is a good teacher, so if she says you are doing something right, then there's something wrong. You would disagree with what she said? Mm -hmm. You got no problem with her? Right. Then you know the problem is you. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay. Interrupts, clock back to the teacher. He was 45 minutes late to class. Although his bus had arrived before 9 o'clock, he was outside the building playing. What do we got to say? Michael says... I want to talk back to the teacher. I won't talk. You meant you did. Why were you talking back to the teacher? The teacher, that's not very nice. Do you do that all the time? How come you do it here? You should think about that. Lynn McLean is a very dynamic leader. He has a tremendous ability to grasp the overview on political issues, the feelings of others, and the music all at once. I think in ways, he's ideal as a conductor. One. He demands perfection all the time. It's a good quality that I feel that I can carry over into my other walks of life, demanding perfection, always striving to do the best at something that you possibly can. This is really good, you know, for a lot of kids who may not have that same type of push from their parents at home. You know, they get a lot of moral values here, such as attitude to uh, strive for your best. It's still laid back to me. Like you're waiting, I'm going, da, and I want pa into it. Into it. Here we go. Come on. Oh, he's a great guy. He's very sincere in his work. He loves the kids. He's willing and he's a very hard worker. He gets the thought across that it takes everybody to be one. <laughs> This is a fine staff. This is really an excellent staff. I don't think there's a, anything at this level of teaching where children are exposed to as fine a staff as we have. There's probably a number of universities that would be glad to have them.
most of these people are excellent performers. The one problem I have is keeping good staff. We lose them to the Pittsburgh Symphony, the Dallas Symphony, the National Symphony. Year in, year out, we always lose one or two. In spring, I get letters from almost any major music school, people who are looking for what we can offer here, which is a chance to teach kids who are willing to give up a Saturday morning and come here without any credit just to play or come on an evening, one, two evenings a week or something. Right away, if you're a musician, you say, well, if someone will come here on a Saturday morning and everything, they're not even getting any credit for it, then you got something going for you. Rather than having a bunch of cards sent to you by a principal and says, these children will study this with you, and they all look at you and dare you to teach them. The relationships between the students and the teachers are really good and the students respect them and know, you know, they've been playing for a while and that they know much more. Sometimes we have arguments within our section about Boeings and things like that. They get worked out between the section and the teacher, which is nice. She'll say, well, we've played this piece and this is the fingering that the whole of the viola section used when I was in this orchestra, and so it's a good fingering, so use it. And so we all use it and we try it. The first three or four stands who know that there's other fingerings and other positions can sort of play around with it and say, well, I sort of don't like it because my hand position's different or my second finger's not as strong or something, and so they'll switch to another fingering a little different. When the orchestra comes together, the teachers will then go in and listen to the rehearsal and discuss how someone else is playing, how that solo is coming off, and how that dovetailing works. So it's essentially the music is providing the format of what, it, what needs to be done. There's a lot of conversation amongst the teachers about what could be done to improve the orchestra. Each one of the staccatos ought to be moving toward the next thing, just like in William Tell. Bum, 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 ba, da, bum, 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 okay? All right, same type of thing. Plus, you got a crescendo written in under there. Right? Right. Okay, let's take it at D. Bum, bum, ba, da, bum, 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 ba, da, bum, 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 okay? D, one, two, three, one, ready, go! Da, real ego crushing things around here is when you see some kid come in from a high school where he is playing all the solos and he's the best musician and he comes in here and he finds out like he may be tenth in line or he he may not even be that far along some of them adjust to that and take to the challenge which tells you something others decide well now i really know so we do a service in that way there's a there's a weeding out tried except in our own backyard and the kids coming up realize that their training is really putting them together they can take their training go overseas with it and match themselves up with anything else so that trip was uh, really very good in that it put confidence into us into the staff the kids the young kids coming up the last trip we took was to Scotland and we all got really psyched we were so psyched oh, we were the best orchestra we were invited to play in the International Festival for the second time, and Mr. McLean, it was a big thing for him, and it was a big thing for the program, and for Washington, D.C., and for the United States. And so we picked really hard pieces. We played Mahler's Fifth. 72, I got an opportunity to play um, the Herbert von Karin Festival of Youth Orchestras in Berlin, Germany. Again, I say, you know, probably never get to Berlin, Germany in my life. and then, uh, in 74, we went to uh, the International Festival of Youth Orchestras in Aberdeen and London. And uh, it's just amazing to get to live with the various people from other countries, other cultures. And then when you consider the fact that 
great orchestras from all over the world come there to perform and play. And here we are, DC Youth Orchestra, a bunch of kids. It's really something else. I have pictures at home, me on the Kennedy Center stage, you know, that's something else. And you, know, you show your kids this 10 years from now, they say, oh, yeah, you know, you were a soloist at the Kennedy Center. It's really a nice, really nice experience. The orchestra season culminated with a performance on the South Lawn of the White House. It was a seasonable August afternoon in Washington, hot and humid. The DC Youth Orchestra shared the sunlight with another group of first-rate musicians, the Junior Philharmonic of Tokyo. The audience included a special guest. There's a beautiful mixture of people, not just in colors, but in economics and experiences. You'll see one child here who's traveled the world and another one who just hasn't been off the block. These things are, uh, they're natural. If we leave things like that, they'll probably take care of themselves. The laws can't do that, can't legislate that. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the White House. We're glad to have all of you here this afternoon, and it's been, it's very, very exciting to me, and I know to you, to have the Junior Philharmonic Orchestra from Tokyo and the District of Columbia Youth Orchestra performing together for us. It's just been a great experience. It just shows you what you can do if you become interested in music when you're young. And the fact that these young people became interested in music and are dedicated to it and takes a lot of hard practice, but it's made a great experience for us too. And I know it's very rewarding for them to be able to, to uh, play. I haven't been able to, um, I won't be able to hear the whole program, but just the part that I have heard is just uh, really great. I know that you have enjoyed all of it. Um, I want to thank Mr. McLean for bringing these young people here. And I just wish that Amy was here. She, had, she left last Friday to go to Plains to stay with her grandmothers, but she has a dulcimer that she's practicing on, and she's planning to take violin lessons in the fall. And uh, I know that if she'd been here today, she would have been inspired to just do uh, a really great job with her violin. So I'm sorry that she missed this, but I do want to thank all of you young people for coming to be with us this afternoon, those of you who came to listen, and especially those of you who made it possible for us to have this performance. Thank you. All of these um, children, not children, but young people from Tokyo have come halfway around the world to perform for us. It's just a great honor and a pleasure for us to have them with the DC Youth Orchestra. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you. just break right down if you leave them break down and you don't apply laws and rules and everything else we have kids who spend an hour and a half two hours almost getting here from virginia maryland they don't have any problem because they know they're coming to something they like they're going to deal with a whole bunch of other kids that they get to know they get to know a lot of kids that they never in god's world ever meet or know unless it was through this it does a, a lot for them in that way. There's a lot for parents. That's one place I probably have seen more growth in parents who have had to deal with each other who within their social patterns would never be put together except for this. And that has put some fine combinations together. I'm very proud of that. Beethoven symphony from their children. 
because they've heard it played and they went to a concert, they've heard it, and they come back and pretty soon, after a couple of years, the parents will come up to me and say, well, I don't think the Beethoven was as good this year as last year's. And three years ago, they had no idea. So there's a, a spin-off in this program that really is, I don't even know how to measure it when something comes up or we have a crisis or something like that. And then I'll get a lot of people calling me back from 10, 15 years ago. And I realized, golly, it's a lot of people. It really is. The DC Youth Orchestra thanks the Exxon Corporation for its grant, which made this presentation possible. <laughs>